Hello everyone, this is Kanakaraj, welcoming you all to learn all. As we all know, today will be our sixth session on data interpretation. If you haven't watched our previous sessions, please go back and watch all our previous sessions. So, in today's session, we'll be dealing with one of the very, very, very important topics of data interpretation. Yes, that is pie chart. When you look at our previous year questions, most of the questions that they have asked will be on pie chart. So I've already taught you the basics of pie chart in my second session. So let's quickly revise that. So how will we represent a pie chart? Pie chart will be in the form of a circle. So in how many different ways you can draw a pie chart? We draw it in two different ways. That is, we'll draw it with respect to angles. We'll represent all the quantities with respect to angles or will represent the quantities with respect to percentages. So we'll convert the salaries or expenditures or everything into percentages and then represent it inside a circle or we'll represent it in form of angles. So these are the two different ways in which we'll be representing a pie chart. So let us look at our first question from our previous year problem. So what is the first question? The pie chart given below shows the number of people using different modes of transport. Now, this pie chart talks about different number of people who use different modes of transport. So they're told that totally there are 1080 people who are traveling to their workplaces. And all these people use different types of transportation. So now, what have they represented it using? They've represented using Degrees because whenever you're representing va values inside a pie chart in terms of percentages, the value of percentage cannot exceed 100. Whenever you have some value exceeding 100, it means it is not in percentages and it is represented in terms of angles. So now, what is this? It will be 120 degree, 50 degree, 40 degree, 90 degree and 60 degrees. So let's quickly look at our first question. What are they asking? In the given number pie chart, how many people are using train to reach their workplace? So train is represented by light blue color, that is 120 degrees. So now there are total of how many people? 1080 people. Now I'm filling all these 1080 people inside a circle. So inside a circle, what is the total angle? Total angle will be equal to 360 degrees. So what is one degree equal to? How do I get one degree? I have to divide it by 360 degrees. Now I've divided my right hand by 360. So what do I need to do in my left hand? Even on my left hand, I need to divide it by 360 degrees. So what will be the value of one degree here? One degree will be equal to zero, zero gets canceled. 12 threes is 36, 12 nines is 108. Three ones, three threes. So one degree will be corresponding to three people. So one degree means three people. So how many people are using a train here? There are 120 degrees. 120 degree meaning how much? 120 into three people. What is 120 into three? It is nothing but 360 people are using train to reach their workplace. So what will be my final answer? My final answer will be option C, that option B, that is 360 degrees. So let's move on to the next question. In a given pie chart, the number of persons using the car is what percentage of persons using the scooter? So how many people are using the car here? There are totally 40% of people who are using a car. So 40 is what percentage of 50? How do we find out? We need to take the value that we are comparing in the numerator divided by the value that we are comparing the value to. To which value we are comparing? We are comparing it to the number of people using scooter. How many people are using scooter here? There are totally 50 people who are using scooter. So what is 40 by 50 into 100? 51 times 52 times is 100. 40 into 2 gives me 80%. So number of people who are using a car is 80% of total number of people using scooters. 
So what will be my final answer? My final answer will be option C, 80%. So now let's move on to the next question here. What are they asking? In a given pie chart, what is the ratio of total number of people using train and car together to total number of people using other modes of transport? Now we need to find the ratio between total number of people using trains and cars together, meaning train plus car together is to the total number of people using other modes of transport, which are the other means of transport except train and car. The other means of transport are scooter, cycle and bus. Scooter plus cycle plus bus. So there are how many people who are using train? We found out that. There are totally 360 people who are using train. Yes, how many people are using car here? The number of people using car are 40 degree. So one degree is three people. So 40 degree will be 40 into three is two. How many people are using scooter here? 50 degrees. So one degree is three people. So 50 degree meaning 50 into three. Plus, how many people are using cycle? Cycle will be equal to 90 into three. Plus, how many people are using bus here? Bus here will be 60 into 3. Now, what can I do? I can take out 0 from, I can cancel out 0 everywhere here. So, 0 gets cancelled. Once again, I can cancel out 3 as well. So, if I take out these 3, what will I be left out with? 12 plus 4, that's something about 16 is 2. 5 plus 9 gives me 14 plus 6 gives me 20. 16 is to 20. What is 16 is to 20? It can further be simplified. 4, 4 is 16, 4, 5 is 20. So what will be my final answer? My final answer will be 4 is to 5. But then, do we need to do all this? No, there's another shortcut to this. What is that? So we know that in terms, of, everything is in terms of degrees. And in ratios, we know that everything that is common will get cancelled. So instead of taking, instead of doing all, in term, taking in terms of people, let us directly take it in terms of degrees. How many people are using train plus car together? 120 plus 40. That is nothing but 160 people are using train plus car together. Is 2. How many people are using the other means of transport? So the total angle inside a pie chart is 360 degrees. So out of that, 160 degrees have already been considered. What is the remaining value? Remaining value is 200. 200 plus 160 gives me 360. So 160 is to 36, 200 will be my final answer. So if I simplify this, what do I get? 0, 0 gets cancelled. For 4, 16, for 5, 20, I'll be getting the same answer. But then I'll be getting this within one step here. So now let's move on to the next question. This is the next main question. What are they talking about? What does this pie chart represent? It represents the expenditure of a person. So the pie chart given below shows the expenditure in percentages. Our previous problem was represented in terms of angle and if this pie chart is represented in terms of percentage. It is talking about the person called as Mahesh and they've also given the total monthly income of Mahesh which is 26,000. So now what are they telling? What is the first question? They're asking us how much does he spend on rent? So what is the money that he's spending on rent? He's spending a total of 8% on rent. So what does this mean? It means he's spending 8% of total income. So what is his total income? They've given us the total income to be 26,000. So what is 8% of 26,000? If we simplify this, what do I get? Percentage and two zeros gets canceled. What is 8 into 26? 8 into 20 gives me 160. 8 into 6 gives me 48. 160 plus 48 gives me 208 and 10 as it is. So what is the amount he's spending on rent? It is rupees 2080. So do I have that in the options? Yes. Option A, 2080 will be my final answer. So now let's go on to the next question. What are they asking? How much more does he spend on savings and fuel taken together than transport? They're telling that he's spending more on savings and savings and fuel, but they don't know how much more he's spending. And they're asking us to find out how much more is spending. 
So let me give you a small example. Let's say you have 12 rupees and your friend has 8 rupees. If I ask you, how much more money do you have when you compare it with your friend? How do you do that? Well, minus 8 because you have 12, 12 rupees and your friend has 8 rupees. So you have 12 minus 8, that is 4 rupees more than your friend. So first, what do I need to do? I need to find out the value that you have. So in this case, I need to find out the amount that he's spending on savings and fuel. What is the amount that he'll be spending on saving? It is nothing but 22%. So he'll be spending 22% on savings or he'll be saving 22% of the money. Plus, how much is he spending on fuel? Spending a total of 20% on fuel. That is 22 plus 20. So what is his total money he's spending on savings and fuel? That is nothing but 20 plus 22. That is 42%. This is more than the money that he's spending on transport. So how much money is he spending on transport? This is savings plus fuel. Now what is the money that he's spending on transport? Transport is represented by Greek color. It is nothing but 15%. He's spending 15% on transport. So how much is 42% more than 15? So how do you get? You subtracted greater value by smaller value. So if I subtract 15 from 42, what do I get? 42 minus 15 gives me 27. So how much more does he spend? He spends 27%. So now if I simplify this, what do I get? 27 by 100 of 26,000, two zeros, two zeros, it's cancelled, 260 into 27, what can I write 27 as, I can write it as 27 can be written as 26 plus 1 into, 20, 260 can also be written as 26 into 10, so what do I do is, now first I'll cross multiply this 26 inside, what is 26 square, we all know that 26 square is 676, plus 26 into 1 is 26, the whole in two, I'll keep this 10 as it is. So now, what is 676 plus 26? 676 plus 20 gives me 696. 696 plus gives, 6 gives me 702. Into 10 gives me 7020. So what will be my final answer? My final answer will be option C, 7020. So let's move on to the next question here. What are they telling? Add his income being 22,000, how much less he would have spent on miscellaneous? So let's say you have your income is 10 rupees. Now what you will do is since you're getting 10 rupees, you will be spending 5 rupees on, or let's say you're spending 50% of this money on what? On buying a cake. So you'll be spending 5 rupees on buying a cake. Now, if your income suddenly reduces, if it becomes 8 rupees, how much will you spend on a cake? Once again, it will be 50%. So how much of money you'll be spending? You'll be spending 4 rupees to buy a cake. Similarly, in this case, what are they asking? Add his income being 22,000. How much less you would have spent? So now, compare these two. Before you used to spend 5 rupees. Now you're spending 4 rupees. So when you compare these two, how much less you're spending? 5 rupees minus 4 rupees. That is, you're spending 1 rupee less now. Now, because your salary is decreased, you're spending 1 rupees less. So, similarly, similarly, how do we find, how do you find the difference if his amount was 22,000? First, we need to find how much he was spending initially. We found initially he was spending how much on miscellaneous? He used to spend 17% on miscellaneous. 17 percentage of total amount is 26,000. Now, what is 17% of 26,000? Two zeros gets cancelled. So I'll keep it as it is. 17 into 260. Now, what is the money that he's spending now after his salary is decreased? Now his salary has become 22,000. So once again, he's spending the same 17,000. 17,000 of the same, 22,000. Percentage and two zeros gets cancelled. So what am I left out with? 17 into 220. Now, how did we get the difference here? Greater value minus lesser value, which is greater value 260 minus 
17 into 220. Now what I need to do, I need to take out 17 comma. So what will I be left out with? 260 minus 220. What is 17 into 260 minus 22? It's nothing but 220 is nothing but 40. What is 17 into 4? 17 into 4 is nothing but 68 plus 10 as it is. So what is the difference in the new spending? The difference is 680. But then, do you need to do all this procedure? No. Once again, you have the shortcut. Look at this. What is it before he used to spend? 50% of his 10 rupees. Now he's spending the same, 50% of his 8 rupees. So how much less he's spending? What we can do is we can take the difference between these two. What is the difference? The difference here is 2 rupees. So 50% of this 2 rupees is nothing but 1 rupee. And that will be the difference that he is spending, difference in the money that he is spending. Similarly, what has happened is salary is reduced to become 22,000 before he used to get 26,000. Now he's getting how much? 22,000. So what I'll do, I'll subtract 22,000 from this. So if I subtract, what do I get? 4,000. So now what will be the difference in the money that he'll be spending on miscellaneous? It will be because he's spending 17% of the total income. The difference between the income says 4,000. The difference between his spending before and now will be 17% of this 4,000. So percentages and two zeros gets cancelled. One second. What is 17 into 40? 17 into 40 is nothing but 680 rupees. We'll get the same answer, but then we'll be getting it in two steps this time. So now let's move to the next question here. What does it say? If he invests 65% of his savings on purchasing gold, then how much amount did he spend on gold? First, let us see what is his savings. How much did he save? He used to save 22% every time. So his savings 22% of his total savings is 22% of total income. That is nothing but 26,000. Now, what are they telling? Out of this total income, out of this total income, he's spending 65% on purchasing gold. So he's spending 65% on purchasing gold. So what is the money that he's spending on gold? Spending on gold will be 65% of 22% of 26,000. So if I simplify this, what do I get? Percentages and two zeros get scanned. What is the remaining? 65 percentage can also be written as 65 divided by 100 into 22 into 26. 513 times is 65, 520 times is 100. This is not 26, it is 260. I forgot the zero here, yeah, sorry. So zero, zero gets cancelled. Two ones, two thirteens is 26. Now what is 13 square? 13 square is 169 into 22. So how do we quickly do this? can also write 622 as 20 plus 2. Now tell me, what is 169 into 2? 169 into 2, we all know that it is 338. 160 into 2 is 320. 9 into 2 is 18. So it is 338. So what is 169 into 20? It will be 10 more than 338. That is 3380 plus 338 gives me the Final answer. What is 3380 plus 338? 3300 plus 300 gives me 3600. 3680 plus 30 gives me 3712. So 710 plus 8 gives me 718. So what will be my total ex expenditure on gold here? It will be 3718. So do I have that in the options? Yes. Option D, 3718 will be my final answer so now let's move to the next question what are they asking what will be the approximate difference between the average expenditure on savings rent and fuel and average expenditure on food transport and savings look at this we have to find the average of these three first then we need to find the average of these three and then what do we need to do we need to take the approximate difference between them be very careful they're asking the approximate value and not the exact value. So why am I telling to concentrate on this or be careful? You'll understand when we start solving the problem. First, 
what is the average between the money that he's spending on savings rent and fuel since everything is in terms of percentage i'll directly take the average in terms of percentage as well so how much is he spending on savings it is 22% plus what is average sum of all values divided by number of values so what is sum of all values 22% plus what is the amount he is spending on rent he is spending 8% on rent so 8% plus how much is he spending on fuel he is spending total of 20% on fuel what is the average sum of all observations divided by number of observations the number of observations here are 3 so if i simplify this what do i get 22 plus 8 gives me 30 30 plus 20 gives me 50 percentage by 3 now next what do i need to do i need to take the average of food transport and savings how much does he spend on food he spends a total of 18% on food so it is 18% once again we need to take the average so it is sum of all values what is the next term he stay how much is spending on transport he is spending a total of 15% on transport 18% plus 15% plus how much is spending on savings savings is spending 22% once again so divided by number of observations once again 3 so what is 18 plus 22 18 plus 22 gives me 40 40 plus 15 gives me 55 percentage or 55% by 3 so now what will be the difference between these two greater value divided by smaller value so if i take the difference what do i get 55 by 3 minus 50 by 3 that is nothing but 5 percentage divided by 3 Five percentage of what? Five percentage of his total income. So how do I do this? Five percent can also be written as five percent of total income. Five by three of total income is nothing but twenty-six thousand. So if I simplify this, what do I get? Percentage and two zeros gets cancelled. Five by three into two sixty. So now. Is two sixty divided divisible by three? No, it is not divisible by three because the sum is eight. So I want the sum to be nine. Since they are asking us the approximate value, as I told you, why I told you to be careful with this, you can slightly increase or decrease the number so that it is divisible by three. So how much should I increase the number so that it is divisible by three? Since the sum of all the digits is eight, I need to increase this term by one. That is. Five by three of two sixty one. So if I divide this, what do I get? Three ones, three eights, twenty four. Remaining is twenty one. Three sevens is twenty one. So what is five into eighty seven? Five into eighty gives me four hundred. Five into seven gives me thirty five. So it is nothing but four thirty five. Since I've increased the value here, what should be my answer? Actual answer? My actual answer should be slightly less than 435 because I've increased my denominator here. So, do we have 435 in the options? No, we don't have 435 in the options. So, what does that mean? Our options should be close to 435, but a less than 435, which is the value which is close to 435 but less than 435. It is nothing but my option A. That is four thirty three will be my approximate value. So now let's move on to the next main question here. What are they asking, or what does this pie chart represent here? The following pie chart shows the study time of different subjects in a day. Let us assume that you are a student. So you are writing two examinations. Let's say you are writing maths exam and physical education examination. You know that physical ed education examination is very easy. So when you sit to study, what do you do? You study physical education for very less time. Let's say you're studying it for two hours. And for how long will you study math? Since math is a difficult subject, you'll be studying for ten hours. Totally, how many hours you'll be studying in a day? In a day, you'll be studying for twelve hours. Now let's say in two hours you're not able to study this physical education examination. So what you'll do is You'll increase one more hour. So totally, you'll study for three hours. But then you don't want to study for more than twelve hours in a day. So totally, you need to study only for twelve hours in a day. So what you'll do, you'll decrease the amount that you'll be studying in mathematics. 
so how much you'll be studying you'll be studying only nine hours for mathematics so totally you'll be studying how much once again you'll be studying only for 12 hours am i clear with this so let's look at our first question what are they asking the time spent to study history and chemistry is 4 hours 30 minutes so how much is he spending to study history he's spending 15 percentage of his total time in studying history and how much is he spending to study chemistry once again he's spending 15 percent of the total of 100 percent or his total time to study chemistry together how much will be spending 15 plus 15 it is 30 percentage of his total time will be spent on studying his history and chemistry and that is equal to how much four hours and 30 minutes since it is in both hours and minutes what i'll do here is i'll convert it into either hours or minutes so it is easier to convert it into minutes so i'll be converting this entire value into minutes so how do i convert four hours into minutes 4 into 60 gives me minutes. 4 into 60 is nothing but 240 minutes. So 4 hours is equal to 240 minutes plus 30 minutes gives me 270 minutes. Now they have told that 30% of his total time is 270 minutes. So what are they asking? Then he studied physics for how, many, how much time? So what is the amount he is spending on physics? He is spending 20% of his total time. So how do I do this? 20% of his total time is how much x? I don't know the value for this. What I'll do here is I'll cross multiply this. So if I cross multiply, what do I get? x is equal to 270 into, I'll be taking this 20% of total time the other side. So I'll be getting 20% of total time, the whole divided by x going on to the other side, this 30% coming to the denominator. So it will be 30 percentage of total time. So now if I cancel this out, what will I be left out with? 0, 0 gets cancelled. 3, 1, 3, 3, 9, 2790 into 2. So what will be the value of x? Value of x will be 180 minutes. We have that in our options. My options are in terms of hours here. So what do I need to do? I need to convert it into hours. How do I convert minute into minutes into hours? I simply divide it by 60. So what will I be left out with? X will be equal to three hours. Now do I have that in our options? Yes. Option D, three hours will be my final answer. So now let's move on to the next question. What are they asking? If the student studied chemistry for three hours, meaning how much is studying? 50% of the total time. 15% of the total time is equal to three hours. What is three hours in terms of minutes? Okay, so let me convert it. Let me not convert it into minutes because the options are all in hours. So I'll keep it as it is, three hours. Now, what is what are they asking? Then he studied geography for how many hours? So what is the time he's spending on geography? He's spending 10% of total time. So now what do I need to do? What is this? This will be, I'll assume this value as x. So now what do I need to do? Once again, I'll simply cross multiply this. If I cross multiply this, what do I get? X will be equal to three hours into 10 percentage of total time divided by 15 percentage of total time. So what happens? Total time, total time gets canceled. Percentage, percentage once again gets canceled by one, 15 once. 15 two times is 30. So what will be the value of X? X will be equal to two hours. So do I have that in the options? Yes. Option B, two hours will be my final answer. So now let's move on to the next question here. What is it telling? If a student studied 10 hours in a day, but now they're giving us the total time here. He or she studied mathematics for how long? So now they're asking us to find the time spent by the student on mathematics. He's spending 30% of his total time. 30% of his total time is studying mathematics. So what is his total time? He's studying for 10 hours in a day. So his total time will be 10 hours. So what is 30% of 10 hours? So now you people tell me, what is 10% of 10 hours? 10% of 10 hours is nothing but one hour. How did I do that? So for people who haven't understood this, let me take it directly. What can I write 30% as 30 divided by 100? of 10 hours. So what happens here? 
zero zero gets cancelled, zero zero gets cancelled. So what will be my answer? Three hours. So I totally spent three hours in studying mathematics. So if you have to calculate quickly, how do you calculate? Okay, now write thirty percent as you can write it as three into ten percentage of ten hours. So what is ten percentage of ten hours? Ten percent can also be written as ten by hundred into ten. So two zeros gets cancelled. What is ten percentage of ten hours? It is nothing but one hour. So three into one hours give me three hours. Three hours only. So that will be my final answer. But then this calculation will be a little easier for you. So let's move on. The next problem is what are they telling? Instead of ten percent, if we spend fifteen percent to study other subject. And the time taken from the time schedule to study mathematics, if you use 20 hours per day, then the time difference of time for studying mathematics per day is. So the telling totally is spending 20 hours per day. Now let's say he's spending 30% of his time in mathematics. So what will be his fine? How much time will be spending on mathematics? It will be 30% of 20 hours. What is 10 percentage of 20 hours? 10 percentage of 20 hours is nothing but 2 hours. So 30 percentage will be 2 into 3. That is nothing but 6 hours. You'll be spending 6 hours every day on mathematics. Now what they're telling is, instead of spending 10 hours, you'll be spending 10 percentage, you'll be spending 15 percent to study other subjects. And the time that he's spending on other subjects is taken from mathematics. So initially, what, I, what used to happen, you used to spend entire 30% on mathematics and you used to study for 10% of his time for other subjects. Now what he's doing is, he's taking some amount from mathematics and he's giving it to other subjects. How much is he giving? It is 15%, meaning 10 plus 5 gives me 15%. How did I, where did I get this 5% from? I got this 5% from this time I used to spend on mathematics. So what do I need to do? I need to subtract 30% by 5%. So what do I get? 30% minus 5% gives me 25%. Meaning, now we're spending only 25% of his total time in mathematics. What is 25%? 25% can also be written as 1 by 4. There's nothing but fraction 2 percentage relationship. If you haven't understood this fraction 2 percentage relationship, go back to our basic videos on percentages and what's that. So that you understand this fraction to percentage relationship even better. So one by four of what? One by four of total 20 hours that he spend on, spend every day. So what is one by four of 24? Once, four, fives. So now what he's spending? He's spending five hours in math, five hours on mathematics. So now what is the difference between the time he used to spend before and now? Greater value minus smaller value. That is nothing but six hours minus five hours. So what will be my final answer? My final answer will be one hour. And do I have that in the options? Yes. Option C, one hour will be my final answer. So now let's move to the next question. What does it say? The expenditure of a family in a month is represented in a pie chart. This pie chart represents the expenditure of a family. Now, what is the first question that they're asking? They're asking us to find the amount spent on food and clothes. Look at this carefully. What is it represented in terms of? Is it represented in terms of percentage or angles? It is in terms of angles. Because whenever you're representing it inside a pie chart, your percentage value should not increase more than 100%. But we have 120 and 150, meaning it is not percentage and it is angles instead. So. First question, what is the ratio of amount spent on foods and cloth? What is the amount he's spending on food and cloth? He's spending a total of 150 degrees. Out of total of total money he's spending is 360 degrees. Out of that, for how much he's spending for, on food? He's spending 150 degrees. E is to, how much is he spending on cloths? He's spending 30 degrees out of total of 360 degrees on cloths. Now, what can I do? I can directly cancel these two. So zero, zero gets canceled, three ones, three five. So what will be the ratio between the amount he spent on food and cloth? It will be five is to one. So now let's move to the next question. 
what are they asking the percentage money spent on food compared to house rent is now what is comparing is comparing the money that is spent on food that is 150 to the money is spent on house rent how much do you spend on house rent is spent 120 degrees that is 150 by 120 into 100 because they're asking us in terms of percentage so now if i simplify this what do i get zero zero gets cancelled three four is 12 three five is 15 four one is four four twenty five is 100 so what will be my answer it will be 25 into five that is nothing but 125 percentage so do i have that in our options no but then i have something called as none of the above so what will be my final answer my final answer will be none of the above so let's move on to the next question. What are they asking? The total money spent on clothes and miscellaneous items are how much? So how much is he spending on clothes? He's spending 30 degrees out of total of 360 degrees into total money he has spent. So now, do we know the total money that he has spent? No, we don't know the total money that he has spent. So can we find the answer for this? No. We cannot be finding the answer for this. So what will be my final answer? My final answer will be none of the above because we don't know the total money that he's spending. So let's move on to the next question. What are they asking? If the total amount spent is 7,200, find the amount spent on foot. Look at this. This time I know the total money that he's spending. So now I can calculate the money that he's spending on foot. How much is he spending on food? Is spending a total of 150 degrees 150 degrees out of total of how much 360 degrees if totally is spending 360 degrees out of that is spending 150 degrees for food into total money that he spent is 7200 so if i simplify this what do i get 36 zero zero gets cancelled 36 one times 36 two times is 721 zero remaining as it is so what is 15 to 120, oh sorry, 115 to 20, 150 to 2 is 300 plus 10 zero as it is. So it will become 3000. So what will be my final answer? My final answer will be option A, 3000. Let's move on to the next main question for the day. What is this pie chart representing here? It represents the monthly expenditures of a family on food, house rent, clothing, education, fuel, and miscellaneous. Now, what is the first question that they're asking? They're asking if the expenditure for food is 9,000. The expenditure for food here is 9,000. Once again, this pie chart is represented in terms of percentages. So what is the amount that he's spending on food? 30% of total expenditure is spent on food, and that is equal to 9,000. There are two ways of doing this. First, first way is to find the total expenditure. So what will be the total expenditure here? Total expenditure will be, I'll have to cross multiply this. What is 30%? I can also write 30% as 30 by 100. That is equal to 9,000. So what happens? 1010 one, zero gets canceled, three ones, three nines. So what will be the total expenditure here? Total expenditure will be 30,000. So now, what are they asking? Then the expenditure for education. How much is he spending? He's spending 18% of total expenditure on education. So his expenditure on education will be equal to 18% of his total expenditure. So we have found out that his total expenditure is 30,000. So what is 18% of 30,000? Percentage, percentage gets cancelled. 3 into 18 gives me 54 and two zeros as it is. So what will be his total expenditure on education? It is nothing but 5,400. But then I told you there is another way of doing it, which is that we know that 30% of total expenditure is equal to 9,000. Now what are they asking? They're asking us to find 18% of total expenditure because they're asking us to find the education money that he spent on education. That will be equal to how much? I don't know. So I'll be taking it as X. So now what I'll do here is I'll cross multiply this. If I cross multiply this, what do I get? X will be equal to 18 to the other side and 30. X will go above 
30 will be coming below. So it will be 9,000 divided by 30. And this 18% will also be going to the other side. This will be 30% of total expenditure. All into 18% of total expenditure. So if I simplify this, what do I get? Total expenditure gets cancelled. Percentage also gets cancelled. 1, 0, 1, 0 gets cancelled. 3, 1, 3, 6 is 18. What is 9 into 6? 9 into 6 is nothing but 54 plus 2 zeros. Meaning, money that is spent on education will be 5,400 rupees. So now, let's move on to the next question. What are they asking? The central angle for the sector for the expenditure on fuel in decreases. They're talking about fuel here. How much is he spending? Is spending 15% of his total expenditure on fuel. They're asking us to convert this percentage into degrees or percentage into angle. So how do we do that? We know in a circle, what is the total degree? Total degree is nothing but total angle in a circle is 360 degrees. This is 360 degrees. So which will correspond to what? Whenever you're presenting the pie chart in terms of angles, what will it represent to? Total expenditure will be equal to total angle inside the pie chart. So instead of total expenditure, I'll replace it by total angle. That is nothing but 360 degrees. What is 15% of 360 degrees? 15 can also be written as 15 by 100 of 360 degrees. So 1010 gets cancelled, 5 3 is 15, 5 2 is 10, 2 1 is 2, 2 18 is 36. What is 18 into 3? 18 into 3 is nothing but 54 degrees. So Let's move on to the next question here. What are they asking? If the expenditure on fuel is rupees 3000, so they have given us the total money that is spending on fuel, that is 15 percentage of total expenditure is equal to 3000 now what are they asking then the total expenditure excluding expenditure on house rent and education They're asking us to find the total expenditure excluding means meaning we need to subtract expenditure on house rent and education from the total expenditure so let's say i have a value x i can also write this as 100 percentage of x so why did i write this how can i write my 100 percent as 100 percent means 100 divided by 100 of x meaning these two gets cancelled so i'll be remaining with x itself so 100 percent of x is nothing but x itself similarly how can i write my total income as i can also write my total income as 100 percent of my total income because they are nothing but one and the same so now they're asking us to find total expenditure excluding so my total expenditure here is 100 percentage of total expenditure now i have to exclude what excluding means i need to subtract house rent how much is the house rent house rent is 20 percent of the total expenditure so 20 percent of the total expenditure and and education so i need to eliminate our education as well so meaning minus 18 percentage of total expenditure so now if i simplify this what do i get 100 minus 20 gives me 80 80 minus 18 gives me 62 percentage of total expenditure so i need to find the value of this i don't know the value of this but then what do i know i know that 15 percent of total expenditure is 3000 that's given in the question so i'll write it there. write it here 15 percent of total expenditure is equal to what do I do? I simply cross multiply this. If I cross multiply this, what do I get? 62 percentage of total expenditure into 3000 will be equal to 18 percentage of total expenditure. Sorry, x into 15 percentage of total expenditure. So if I cross multiply this, what do I get? x into 15 percentage of total expenditure. So what can I do? I can cancel this total expenditures and percentage as well. So 15 once, 15 two times is 30. So what is 200 into 62? 2 into 62 gives me 124 plus two zeros as it is. 
So that would be equal to the value of my X. What is my X here? Total expenditure, excluding housing and education. So what will be my final answer? My final answer will be 12,400. So now let's move on to the next question. What are they telling? If the percentage of expenditure on food is X percent of the total percentage of expenditure on clothing, education, and fuel. So what is the X percent? So be careful with the question. This is a slightly tricky question. They're asking if the percentage of expenditure on food. So what is the percentage of expenditure on food? Percentage of expenditure on food is 30%. This 30% of the total, 30% of food is X percent of the 30% of food is equal to X percentage of total percentage, total percentage of expenditure on clothing, education and fuel. What is clothing here? Clothing is nothing but 12%. 12%. Plus education, education is 18%. And fuel, fuel here is 15%. Plus 15%. Now, I have to simplify this and find the value of X here. So what will be the value of X? 30% of fuel. So I can tell 30% of total expenditure. So that will be equal to X percentage of 12 plus 18 gives me how much? 30 plus 15 gives me 45 percentage. So what happens? Percentage percentage gets cancelled. So 30 divided by 45 will be equal to X percentage. What can I write my X percentage as? X percentage can also be written as X divided by 100. So what will I be left out with? 30 by 45 will be equal to X divided by 100. So now 15 2 times is 30, 15 3 times is 45. So what will be the value of x? x will be equal to 2 into 100. Now I'm cross multiplying this. If I take this to my denominator, what will I be left out with? 200 divided by 3. And that will be my final answer. So do I have that in the options? No. My options are mixed fractions and fractions. But I don't have the mixed, I don't have mixed fraction and whole numbers. So what I do here is I'll convert this to mixed fraction. So how do I convert three ones is three, three six times is 18. The remaining is two, so three six is 18 once again. So what will I be remaining? I'll be remaining with two by three. So what will be my final answer? My final answer will be option C, 66, two by three. So now let's move on to the last question for the day. What are they asking? Total percentage of expenditure on house rent, clothing, and fuel is greater than percentage of expenditure on food by. So they know that total percentage of house rent, clothing, and fuel together is greater than food. But then by how much is it greater? So oh, what is the house rent? House rent here is 20 percentage of total income, or sorry, 20 percentage of total expenditure. And how much is clothing? Clothing is 12% of total expenditure. Plus, how much is fuel? Fuel is 15% of total expenditure. So if I add all this, what do I get? 20 plus 15 gives me 35. 35 plus 12 gives me 47% of total expenditure. Now, what is this? What is it? What is the percentage of expenditure on food? It is 30 percentage of total expenditure. So how much is this greater than 30 percent of total expenditure? It is greater by 17 percent. If I subtract these two, what do I get? 17 percent of total expenditure. Meaning total percentage of expenditure on house rent, clothing and fuel is greater than the percentage of expenditure on food by how much? 17 percentage. So my final answer will be option B. 17 percent so that's all for me for today people and this will be the end of data interpretation if you people have any doubts please feel free to comment in the comment section below so i'll be 
looking at the comments and getting back to you with the answers for those comments. Thank you so much, people.